The Cup Buzz Ointment A long time ago there was a doctor by the name of Mondo no Kami Morikyo who was a retainer of the great warlord Takeda Shingen. One day he was riding his horse across the river when halfway across the horse came to a halt and could not move. What's this? the doctor exclaimed. Looking down into the water he saw a long yellow arm looming out of the depths its hand firmly grasping the horse's leg. Hey, let go, the doctor yelled, but the hand only grasped the horse's leg more firmly. The doctor unsheathed his sword and in a flash cut off the arm. The horse, now freed, easily crossed over to the opposite bank of the river. The arm, however, was still firmly attached to the horse's leg. Aha, the doctor thought, this is the arm of a kappa. I've come into possession of something quite interesting and detaching the kappa's arm from his horse's leg, he returned home. That evening, just as the doctor was getting ready to go to bed, something slipped quietly into his room. Who are you? the doctor demanded as quickly as he grasped the sword beneath his pillow. Identify yourself. It's the kappa, came a feeble voice. What? The kappa? The doctor lit the small lamp at his bedside and found a one-armed kappa with a pale face seated on the floor. I beg you to forgive me, the kappa began. I promise I'll never play tricks like that again. Please, just give me back my arm. I'm hardly going to give you back your arm, the doctor scowled. Perhaps I should take your other one now. No, no, please don't do that, the kappa pleaded. If you would just give me back my arm, I will teach you how to prepare the most effective ointment in the whole of Japan. Here is a sample. All right, I'll give you back your arm, the doctor said. Let's use it as a trial to see if this ointment really works or not. The kappa took the arm, attached it to its former place on his body, and then applied the medicine where the cut had been made. Miraculously, the arm was restored to its former condition and the wound disappeared altogether. The doctor was duly impressed. I see, he exclaimed, this ointment really does work. Will you teach me how to make it? With this, the kappa taught the doctor exactly how the medicine was made. In gratitude, the doctor smilingly offered the kappa some sake as a show of goodwill. But as he went to get the heated bottle and cups, he suddenly woke up. What? Was this just a dream? In confusion, he looked next to his pillow where he had placed the kappa's arm, but it was not there. This is awfully strange, he thought. The doctor jumped up and hurriedly ran out to the veranda, and there, dripping with water, was the maple leaf-shaped footprints of a kappa. The next morning, the doctor promptly prepared some of the medicine, just as the kappa had taught him, and went to the castle where the lord was residing. There he applied it to the wounds that some of the samurai had received in battle, and then stepped back. To his amazement, the pain the men had felt for days was completely gone, and the wounds had disappeared as though they had never been there. The doctor nodded to himself in quiet understanding. At this point, the doctor left the service of the Lord, and setting up shop, started selling his medicine, which he called the Kappa's Ointment. Soon, the reputation of his medicine spread, and people with one kind or wound came from all over the country to purchase it. The doctor then became a pharmacist, taught the secret preparation of the Katpa's ointment to his children and grandchildren, and his little shop prospered for years to come. <coughs> the Katpa's Return of a Favour A long time ago, in the ancient province of Hida, there lived a farmer in the village of Kawai by the name of Chohei. Early one morning, Chohei went to check on his cucumber patch. Although it had been full of cucumbers up until the day before, he now found that half of them were gone. What's this, he stammered. Who could have done such a thing? Chohei was outraged and decided that from the evening on, he would stay overnight and stand watching the small field. To this end, he built a small camouflaged hut in the corner of the patch and stood guard throughout the entire night, his eyes as big as saucers. By dawn the next morning, no one had come. Well, maybe my being here tipped off the thief, he thought. Then, 
Just as he was rubbing his sleepy eyes and looking blankly around, he saw a small animal about the size of a two-year-old child squatting in the middle of a field, its hands moving energetically back and forth. Aha! That must be the culprit! Chorhei stealthily approached the scene and saw that there was a dark reddish kappa eating cucumbers as though it was in a trance. Right before the farmer's eyes, a pile of cucumbers was rapidly disappearing as quickly as the kappa that could consume them. Chorhei grabbed his staff and, circling around to the kappa's rear, took careful aim at the dish on his head. Here! Chorhei made perfect contact with the dish and there was nothing more the kappa could do. Its eyes rolled around in its sockets and it collapsed on the ground. Chorhei bound it up with rope and straw, threw it over his shoulder and returned home. To make sure that it did not escape, Chorhei tied the kappa up again, this time around its arms, and fastened it to the front of the house. For the kappa, this was a terrible turn of events, and all the people of the village came quickly to take a look for themselves. Just as you might imagine, kappa have really strange heads, one villager remarked. They look just like the karasu tengu. So that's the hand that takes off with the anuses of human beings, said another. As the villagers bantered back and forth about the kappa, they poked it with the ends of their staffs and started to give it a beating. With each blow, the kappa emitted pitiful little cries and apologised for his actions as well as it could. The villagers were amused by this sport and tormented the creature all the more. When evening fell, Chorhei's wife came out to the front of the house to scatter some water. Please, ma'am, the kappa pleaded, won't you unfasten these ropes for me? There's no chance of that, the lady replied. You've eaten the cucumbers that are so hard for us to grow. Do you think we can forgive you for that? Chorhei's wife took the water-filled ladle and wrapped the kappa on the head. But what then? Some water spilled into the kappa's dish and the situation took a different turn. The kappa instantly regained its strength and tore off the ropes. Leaving its left arm, it could not disengage. It ran off to the river without looking back. The next morning, when Chorhei went out to his cucumber patch, there was a one-armed kappa looking small and quiet, seated on the ground. NB Karasu Tengu is the more primitive and dangerous Tengu whose head resembled those of crows. <laughs> Ooh,